our last session we have started with our chapter boiler and we have seen main parts of a boiler and classification of boiler in this session we are going to see Hochschrein boiler and Babcock and Wilcox boiler this is Prasant Karthi and I welcome you all to our lecture series of basic mechanical engineering so let's begin with our first boiler that is Hochschrein boiler so you can see the diagram of a boiler is displayed on the screen in each and every boiler we have to mention four things first is characteristic of a boiler second is specification of a boiler third construction of a boiler and fourth working of a boiler now talking about characteristic of a boiler so we have to mention all the classifications which we have studied in our last session right with respect to this cultural boiler so first of all talking about the orientation so you can clearly see that we will say it as a vertical boiler okay now you can see a furnace is provided inside the boiler shell which means second characteristic internally fired boiler next you can see tubes are provided and there is there are more than one tube which means multi tube boiler but these tubes are connected with a furnace which means hot gases will be flowing through a tube so the classification will be fire tube boiler okay next you can mention based on a circulation so over here we would say natural circulation of hot gases will take place and the pressure of this boiler is operating pressure is 6.5 bar but maximum working pressure is 15 bar which means this comes under the category of a medium pressure boiler okay okay so these are all the characteristic of this boiler now next seeing the specification in a specification you have to mention the dimension of a boiler so the height of a boiler shell is nearly 5.75 meter you have to remember this the diameter of a shell is 2.75 meter the working pressure is 6.5 bar and maximum pressure is 15 bar the steam generating capacity in one hour is 4000 kg okay that is we can say 4 ton per hour so these are all the specifications which you have to man mention then after comes the construction of this boiler so in a construction you have to mention two most important types of parts that is first is mounting and second is accessories mountings are the parts which are mounted on a boiler shell on the outer surface of a boiler shell whereas accessories will be mostly provided inside the boiler shell so what is the main difference between mounting and accessory is that mounting are the necessary parts these are the compulsory parts which must be present on a boiler shell whereas accessories are not compulsory if provided then it will increase the efficiency of a boiler shell so the mountings which are present on a boiler shell as you can see are fit check valve provided at the bottom side on the left side you can see the purpose of this valve is to fit water inside a boiler shell then on a top side you can see there is a steam stop valve provided okay on a boiler shell so we can say that steam which is generated will come out through this valve then beside this steam stop valve there is another valve that is called a safety valve the purpose of safety valve is to remove excessive steam for a, from a boiler shell if the pressure of a steam inside a boiler shell increases beyond the maximum permissible pressure that is 15 bar is the maximum pressure if the pressure of a steam becomes 16 bar then in order to reduce the pressure this valve will allow extra steam to get out from a boiler shell then after as you can see exactly below this steam stop valve there is an anti priming pipe so we have discussed the function of anti priming pipe it is going to convert wet steam into dry steam okay now over here the steam portion is represented by orange color whereas the water which is present is represented by blue color so it is very obvious that steam is, con is in contact with water which means the steam will be a wet steam okay then on the left side on the top left side you can see there is a gauge that is called a pressure gauge this is again a mounting which is going to measure pressure of a steam generated inside a boiler shell below a pressure gauge there is a main hole provided so we know the purpose of main hole the worker, worker or operator will enter into a boiler shell for cleaning and inspection purpose okay now see the bottom of a boiler shell below the furnace portion you can see there is a pit written as an ash pit which is going to collect the heavy ashes generated inside the furnace okay now the furnace is connected with a side chamber that is called a combustion chamber by means of a pipe which is called a flue pipe so this flue pipe is you can see on the left side obviously in bottom side 
Okay, so this pipe is going to convey hot gases from a furnace to the combustion chamber. Now this combustion chamber is connected with the tubes. That is multiple tubes are provided which means these tubes are the multi-fire tube. Okay, and smoke box is provided where hot gases will be collected and will be finally rejected to the surrounding atmosphere to the chimney. And to the smoke box, you can see there is a door provided, it is called a smoke box door for the purpose of cleaning this smoke box at a time of maintenance. As well as a worker can enter into a smoke box through that door for cleaning the fire tubes. Okay, so this all you have to mention in a construction of a boiler. Now, let's start with the working of this boiler. So, working is very simple. First of all, we are going to fit water into a boiler shell through a fit check valve. So, we are first going to open a fit check valve up to a safe water level, which will be shown by a water level indicator. Okay, so this is again water level indicator is a mounting which is going to show the level of water inside a boiler shell. Okay, so after seeing that indicator, we are going to stop the supply of water if it is under the safe water limit. Okay. Then after what we are going to do, we are going to pour coal into a furnace through the fire door which is provided at the bottom side. After pouring the coal, we are going to burn that coal, hot gases will be generated inside a furnace, combustion chamber. Hot gases will try to flow through that flue pipe and finally will come into a combustion chamber. Through the combustion chamber, hot gases will start to flow through the tubes, that is fire tubes. Finally, that hot gases will start to enter into a smoke box and through that it will start to leave the chimney. Now, meanwhile what is going to happen, so surrounding that fire tube, you can see there is water. So, can I say that heat transfer will take place from these hot gases in a tube to the surrounding water. Now, how a heat transfer can take place? So, we can say that first of all, these hot gases will heat up the tube, the temperature of tube will increase. And finally, the water which is in contact with the tube will also be heated up. Gradually, the formation of vapor will take place and all the vapor which will have a low density will be collected on a top portion of a boiler shell that is will try to come out from the water. So, that vapor that is steam generated will always remain on a top side because of low densities. So, this is how water is gradually converted into steam. Finally, the steam will enter into an anti-priming pipe through which we can obtain a dry steam. It will remove all the water molecules from it. And after opening a steam stop valve, we can get a dry steam directly from this Kochran boiler. So this is the working of this boiler. Now let us proceed further. Let us see. I have written all the parts. So you can see the characteristic of a boiler. I have written it is vertical boiler and a fire tube boiler. The number of tubes are more, which means a multi-fire tube boiler. It is an internally fired boiler. It has natural circulation of water and flue gases. Solid as well as liquid fuel can be burned. So it's a low pressure boiler. Specification of this boiler, so as we have discussed, shell diameter is 2.75 meter, height is 5.75 meter, working pressure will be 6.5 bar, maximum pressure will be 15 bar. Steam generation capacity 3500 ton to maximum 4, 000, 4, 4 ton per hour. That is 3500 kg to 4000 kg per hour. Heating surface area is 120 meter square. If you need to write, you can write this. Otherwise, it is okay. You just mention the above four specifications. It is sufficient enough. Okay, now let us see the next part. So, construction of a uh, portion boiler, which we have discussed. So, the boiler consists of a cylindrical shell, MSP nickel firebox, fire tube and chimney. Okay, the top of a boiler shell has a hemispherical cone shape. So, the hemispherical cone of a boiler gives a good strength to withstand pressure of a steam inside a boiler shell. Okay, the hemispherical shape of a furnace can withstand high heat is also used to increase the radiant heat transfer from a furnace to a hemispherical furnace wall. Okay, now all these parts which I have explained you along with that are mountings you also need to explain inside the construction of, the, of this boiler. Now, let us start with the working of this boiler. The water is supplied into a boiler shell through a pit check valve. The coal is introduced to a grate through the fire door. Okay. Then after the hot gas is produced from a furnace, enters into a combustion chamber through the flue pipe, and finally it enters into a fire tube that is horizontal fire tube. And the convective heat transfer takes place from a flue gas is passing inside a tube to the water surrounded the tube. The flue gas is coming from a fire tube enters into a smoke box, and finally it will be discharged to the surrounding atmosphere through the chimney. The ashes which are collected in a grate will be finally discharged directly into a ash pit. Okay, now let us see our next type of boiler that is Babcock and Wilcox. 
border. So you can see the diagram of a border on your screen. Okay, now let us first discuss again uh, that four parts which we need to discuss that is characteristic of this boiler, specification of this boiler, construction and working. Let's start with the characteristic of this boiler. So as you can see the share of a boiler is kept horizontal which means it is a horizontal boiler. Then based on the circulation you can see that tubes are kept at inclination, right? And within the tube there is water filled. Why? How we can know that? So we can say that these tubes are connected directly to the boiler shell. Now can you see any arrangement that uh, furnace is placed inside a shell? No. You cannot see that furnace is anywhere inside a shell which means furnace is placed outside the boiler shell. Inside the boiler shell there is only water. Okay. Which means shell is filled with water and tubes are connected with the shell. So inside a tube there will be water. Now tubes are more than one which means multiple tubes are present. Right? So we can say multi water tube boiler, horizontal boiler. Now see carefully furnace is placed outside that is on the left side you can see left below portion where there is a furnace provided which means another characteristic is that it is externally fired boiler. Okay. Now let us take about uh, talk about pressure. So the pressure of this boiler is 40 bar. Okay. Which means you can visualize the case that is it comes under the category of a high pressure boiler. Now since the tubes, that is water tubes are kept at inclination which means the natural circulation of water will take place, that is water will flow due to density difference, okay. Whereas the flow of hot gases will be forced, okay. So this circulation of hot gases will be called as a forced circulation of hot gases. Now talking about the specification of this boiler, so we will say the length of a boiler is maximum length is 9 meter, the diameter of boiler shell is 1.8 meter. Okay, then after comes the pressure. So maximum pressure 40 bar and steam generation capacity is 40 ton per hour. That means 40,000 kg per hour steam can be generated in this boiler that is Babcock and Wilcox boiler. Okay, we can even talk about the diameter of a water tube. So the diameter of a water tube over here is, is 1.25 meter and even you can see a superheated tube is placed. So the diameter of superheated tube is 0.75 meter. Okay, you can write this specification otherwise you need to just mention the four most important specification that is how much is the length of a boiler shell, then diameter of a boiler shell, then you would say working pressure is how much and then after how much is the steam generating capacity. Okay, so this comes under category of specification. Now let's discuss about construction of this boiler. You can clearly see the mountings on the boiler shell that is pressure gauge is provided. So I hope that you are clear with all the mountings and what is their purpose. So the purpose of pressure gauge is to measure the pressure of a steam generated inside a boiler shell. Then after water level indicator that is water gauge is written. So it is going to show the level of water inside a boiler shell. Bottom side uh, below the water level indicator there is a Feed check valve, that is feed water inlet is written. Okay, so we know that the purpose of feed check valve is to feed water and go boil the shell. Okay, then on a top side of a shell you can see safety valve is written, which means the purpose of safety valve is to remove excess of steam in order to maintain uh, in order to maintain the pressure of a steam within a permissible limit. Then after anti priming pipe, which is going to convert wet steam into dry steam. Okay. Steam stop valve is provided which means from that valve we can obtain a superheated steam out of a boiler shell. The purpose of superheater, so superheater purpose is to convert dry steam into a superheated steam. Now over here remember one thing that is the orange portion representation is of a weight steam, okay. The blue portion representation is of a water. Okay, on the right side you can see on a shell there is a main hole provided through which a worker can enter into a boiler shell. Now talking about the bottom portion of this construction, you can see a furnace is provided on the left side. Below the furnace there is a ash pit provided to collect the heavy ashes. Then now besides the furnace there is a clean out door provided. Through this door operator can enter into a bottom portion where the furnace is present. He can clean the internal surface of this arrangement. Okay. Or right. similarly the clean out doors will be provided on a back side of this water tubes in order to remove the fly ashes from the out surface, outside surface of this tube. Okay. Why? Because hot gases causes fly ashes which can stick on the outer surface of this 
tubes. Okay. Now, uh, if you see carefully the tubes, the bottom most portion of this inclined tube is connected with a pipe. So that pipe is of a mud box. If you see carefully, all the mud particles will be collected within that, and that mud box is finally connected to a blow of coke through which all the mud particles can be removed from this boiler shell. Okay. Now next, there are two headers. So first header is called a uptake header. And second one is called a down take header. Okay, so that is a down corner where you can see is it uh, that header is a down take header, whereas it is written on a upside on the upside towards the boiler shell is a up take header. Okay, similarly there are tubes provided. So one is a long riser tube, another one is a short riser tube. Now let us understand the working of this boiler. So we would say first of all we are going to fill water into a boiler shell through a fill check well up to a safe water limit which will be shown by the water level indicator. After filling that we are going to fill coal into a furnace that is we are going to place coal on a grid you can see on the bottom side. Okay after placing a coal we are going to do its combustion. After doing combustion hot gases will be generated so its flow will start to uh, begin in an upward direction it will start to flow in an upside. Okay. And once the flow of hot gas is started, we can say after feeding water, the water which is present in our tubes will be heated first, right? So first of all, heat transfer will take place from these hot gases to the tubes. Tubes will be heated up, and finally from the tubes, heat will be transferred to the water which is present inside it. Okay. Now, can I say that the portion of a tube which is directly exposed to the furnace will have a much higher temperature? Right? If higher is the temperature, so we know the density of water will decrease with the increment in the temperature. So minimum density will be at which place? So we would say at a place where tubes are directly exposed to the furnace, that is on the left side. Okay. Now, as the hot gas is flows further, we can say that on the right side portion of a tube, where when a hot gas comes in contact, so the heat energy uh, present in a hot gas will be low. Right? So heat transfer over here will also take place, but temperature of water inside this tube will be lesser compared to that which are directly exposed to the top of a furnace. Okay, so you can say the density on right side of these tubes, multiple tubes will be higher, whereas on the left side of a multiple tubes will be lower. So what is going to happen? So can I say that high density water will push the low density water? Right? So high density water is on which side? So we would say on the right side. Right. Whereas the low density water obtains on which side of a tube. So we would say on a left side of a tube. So high density water will push a low density water. So in this direction you can say a circulation that is from right side towards the left side in an upward direction. And finally that hot water form will be transferred into a boiler shell through the up tech header, where there is a short riser tube written. Okay, when the flow of water into a water tubes will take place from the right side, that is a down take header, where you can see a down corner is written. So, in this way, a circulation of water will take place. Now, whatever steam which is formed inside a boiler shell will be collected on the top side of a boiler shell, and that steam will be a wet steam since it is going to remain in contact with the water. Now, that steam will pass into an anti priming pipe where it is where it, it will be converted into a dry steam, and for, from that dry steam that is obtained will pass into a superheated tube. Now what is going to happen? So you can see a U-shaped tube is shown over there. So whenever this dry steam passes through that tube, can I say that that superheated tube is directly exposed to that hot gases which means a heat transfer will take place from a hot gases to a tube and from a tube to dry steam. Temperature of a dry steam will increase and so finally it will get converted into a superheated steam that will come out to a boiler shell through steam stock. Wow. So this is so this is how we can say that the superheated steam is generated inside this backlog in Wilcox boiler. Now flow of hot gases will take place will finally get out through the chimney. Over there you can see there is a damper provided which is going to control or we can say regulate the flow of hot gases, which means it can increase or decrease the flow of hot gases according to the requirement. Okay, now let's quickly see all the parts which I have discussed. So you can see a characteristic is mentioned, that is a horizontal boiler, water tube boiler, then multi water tube boiler, natural circulation of water will take place and force circulation of flue gases. Similarly, solid as well as liquid fuel can be burned, that is we can burn coal. Okay. 
Now, specification of this boiler, so we can say shell diameter is 1.22 meter to 1.83 meter, but you have to just mention only a maximum diameter of this boiler shell. So, you can say you can write 1.8 meter, okay. Similarly, length of a boiler, you can write 9 meter. Working pressure, you can mention 40 bar and steam generation capacity is 40 ton per hour, that is 40,000 kg per hour. If you do not mention efficiency, it's okay, that is efficiency 60 to 80 percent, but just mention this top three or four parts, that is shell diameter, length, working pressure and steam capacity. Okay, next, construction, so as we have discussed, it consists of an inclined water tube, a steam and a water drum and a mud box provided and a superheater. A drum is connected to the uptake and a downtake header by a short riser tube. This header connected to the series of inclined water tubes. The water tubes inclined to a horizontal are about 15 degree uh, about in order to obtain a natural circulation of water. The handhold is provided in a header in front of each tube for cleaning and inspection of a tube. Pepper plates as we have discussed is provided to increase the circulation of hot gases that is a force circulation and that also in a sine wave form okay next working of this boiler so we have discussed that working of this vapor and reverse boiler is a is first the water starts to come in the water tubes from a drum to a downtake header with the help of a boiler feed pump which continues to feed the water against the drum pressure next the water present in the inclined water tube gets heated up by the flue gases produced by the burning of coal on a fire Great. So, remaining all parts are same which I have explained you. So, the working of this boiler is very easy. Okay, now in today's session, we are going to keep a preview. In our next session, we will discuss our next type of boiler that is the Engage Boiler. So, till then, stay tuned and thank you all.